Hi everyone, this is Ryan from rpnt.ca and today we're going to be talking about the drug hydromorphone, also known as Dilaudid. You can use the timestamps in the video description to jump ahead. Hydromorphone belongs to the opioid agonist drug classification, which means that it binds to and activates opioid receptors, which are found in the central nervous system, or CNS. Here, you can see that we have these empty opioid receptors throughout the CNS. Hydromorphone would bind to these receptors, triggering the opioid effects. Opioids like hydromorphone can cause generalized central nervous system depression, which may result in sedation or decreased level of consciousness and respiratory depression or slowed breathing. Part of where hydromorphone acts is directly in the brainstem's respiratory centers, located in the medulla and the pons. This is why hydromorphone can cause respiratory depression. Opioids can also cause feelings of euphoria, analgesia or pain relief, decreased GI motility, and more. So hydromorphone can be used in the management of moderate to severe pain as an analgesic when a non-opioid analgesic is not effective. Always start with non-opioids when possible, due to the risk of addiction that comes with opioids. Like we said, one of the effects of opioids is respiratory depression, which slows the respiration rate. Some clients, especially those with end-stage heart failure or those in palliative care, may experience the feeling of breathlessness or dyspnea, and their respiration rate may increase. Hydromorphone is often given in palliative care to alleviate those symptoms of dyspnea by regulating their breathing. Hydromorphone is also known to suppress cough due to its ability to affect the medulla, where the cough center is also found. So one of the off-label uses is refractory cough. Hydromorphone is sometimes considered a preferred choice of opioids for elderly clients due to hydromorphone's decreased risk of causing constipation, which is a common problem in elderly clients. Hydromorphone may also be preferred in clients with renal impairment. Be aware that hydromorphone is approximately five times more potent or five times stronger than morphine. For example, one milligram of hydromorphone is equivalent to about five milligrams of morphine. So keep that in mind, especially when switching from one drug to another. When given subcutaneously or intravenously, hydromorphone is approximately twice as strong as it would be when given orally. For example, if you're switching from oral administration to subcutaneous administration, an order of 1 mg of oral hydromorphone would be switched to about 0.5 mg of subcutaneous hydromorphone. Some common hydromorphone doses are 1-4 to mg orally every 4 hours, or about 0.5 mg to 2 mg subcutaneously every four hours. Notice the difference in dosing between oral and injectable administration. Like we mentioned, hydromorphone can cause respiratory depression, which can be life-threatening. It is one of the major side effects that we look out for. Be aware that constipation is an important side effect of hydromorphone due to its effect of decreased GI motility. CNS depression may manifest as dizziness, headache, sedation or decreased level of consciousness, confusion, hallucinations, and more. Other side effects include drug dependency, urinary retention, dry mouth, nausea, and more. As we know, hydromorphone causes CNS depression, which may worsen if used with other CNS depressants, such as alcohol, antidepressants, antihistamines, and more. Monoamine oxidase inhibitors, or MAOIs for short, may also increase the effects of hydromorphone, increasing the risk for CNS or respiratory depression. There are also some herbs that may increase the effects of hydromorphone, including cava cava, chamomile, and more. Some hydromorphone formulations contain bisulfites, therefore hypersensitivity to bisulfites is a contraindication. Avoid use in clients with a GI or bowel obstruction, as well as in clients with acute or severe respiratory distress, such as an untreated asthma attack. Opioids have been linked to adrenocortical insufficiency, so caution should be exercised in clients who already have adrenal insufficiency. Caution should also be used in clients with head injuries or increased intracranial pressure, especially monitor for sedation and respiratory depression in these clients. Hydromorphone is considered a high-risk or high-alert medication. It is important to be aware of the policies and procedures regarding high-alert medications in your area. Independent double checks are often required when preparing injectable hydromorphone to avoid errors when administering high alert medications. Hold hydromorphone and notify the provider if respiration rate is below baseline, usually less than 12 respirations per minute, due to the side effect of respiratory depression. If given IV, it is recommended that hydromorphone is given over at least 2 minutes to help prevent rapid CNS depression. 
increase hydration and bulk forming foods to reduce the risk of constipation. As with many medications, it is important not to discontinue opioids like hydromorphone abruptly, but to instead gradually taper the dose according to the provider's instructions to reduce the risk of withdrawal symptoms and severe pain. In the event of opioid overdose, an opioid antagonist, such as naloxone, also known as Narcan, can be used to prevent further opioid binding to the opioid receptors. Naloxone often comes as a nasal spray or as an injection. And that's about it for the basics of hydromorphone. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments or visit rpnt.ca for more help.